There are two basic track types in Bitwig Studio, instrument tracks and audio tracks. Instrument tracks contain note clips, which contain note events, aka MIDI. Audio tracks hold audio clips, which contain audio events, aka WAV files. Hybrid tracks can hold both audio and note clips. Dragging an audio clip on an instrument track or a note clip onto an audio track converts them into hybrid tracks. Both audio and note signals flow left to right, top to bottom in device lanes. Note signals are represented with this yellow dot, audio signals with a meter bar. Instruments like synthesizers and samplers turn note input into audio output while blocking any audio coming through. But the MIDI will still be passed through to the end of the lane. Many effects and modulators can also make use of this MIDI. For example, key tracked filters or envelope modulators on later effects. Audio signals then go to whatever group the tracks are placed in, where they are added together and from here on processed as a single signal. Note signals don't normally go up to the group to prevent making a mess of too many MIDI signals. The master track is the group that contains all groups. That's how it gets its little crown symbol. It's the track whose output is rendered as the final song. When you drag in another project file, its master track gets imported as a group. When you enter a group in group view, you can see it in the place of a local master track. Any group, including the master group, can hold FX tracks, aka sends and returns. When any given track is in a group with an FX track, a little dial will appear in the inspector that allows you to send this track's output to the FX track. You can also tweak these dials from the FX tracks. Here they are represented as a tiny little fader. This fader's automation lane, however, only lives in the original track. By right-clicking the dial, you can decide whether to send before or after the fader, solo and mute controls with auto allowing you to set the setting for all ins on the send track. Sends can also be sent to other sends or to themselves, allowing for fun experiments with pre-processing the audio or feedback loops. The FX track's main output then also goes to the group it lives in. Bouncing note or hybrid tracks in place will then result with audio in place where the MIDI was. This audio stems from the earliest instrument in the chain, meaning it will include any post affix, but not affix out of the instrument's chain like this filter plus. The audio will then bypass the instrument chain and enter the FX after the instrument. Bouncing groups in place creates an audio clip on the group track that overrides any contents of the group for its duration. Likewise, bouncing sends in place will override the inputs of the track for the duration of the audio clip. If you drag the send from the bottom of the group up between other tracks, it gets converted to an ordinary audio track and any unbounced inputs are discarded. Using note FX, instrument or audio FX layers, you can split the signal into parallel layers on a single track. Each of these chains will have its own mixer fader accessible in the inspector. In addition to FX layers that just duplicate the signal, there are also a number of other kinds of splits like multibind FX. I already made a video discussing each of them and some plugins also allow you to split up their output signal into multiple parts to create multiple output chains. You can tell this by seeing two arrows. By clicking add missing chains, all these are created, allowing you to process each of the components of the sound individually. Here for example, I've got an instrument plugin, addictive drums, that lets me process all the drum mics separately. And here I've got an FX plugin, ST1B, a transient shaper, that lets me process the transient and the residual part of the signal separately. There are two main ways to break out of the hierarchy of tracks, groups and sends. Input routing and audio or MIDI receivers. Using the input routing dropdowns, you can get both audio and MIDI from other tracks or from external sources like your audio interface into a track. Notice however that the audio will only come through if either input listening is enabled or if you select the track and hit record. When you record or bounce in place, the input will be written into a clip.
You can use any effect in any chain as an input. If you want to get the audio before all effects, just place a tool doing nothing at the start of the chain and it'll appear as a routing node you can access. The other way, a device called audio or node receivers allows you to get audio or node signals from anywhere in a project anywhere else in a project. Mix it with the original audio or route it in parallel in an FX layer. There's also a grid module called audio sidechain that allows you to pipe another track's audio into a grid patch. Effects and plugins like Dynamics processors have a sidechain input dropdown that allow you to route foreign audio into their sidechain input. All these possibilities allow for multiple ways to create the exact same routing setups. For example, if you want to process two instances of a sound in parallel, to for example create one version with and one without reverb, you can use an FX layer on the original track and process different lanes of the FX layer, use another audio track with the output of the sound routed into this track's input, and then place a reverb on that track, once again resulting in a dry version and a reverb version. You can do the exact same thing, but instead of using input routing, you can use an audio receiver to get the audio of the original sound, and then place your reverb, or create an FX track in the same group. Send the audio to the FX track, and then place the reverb on it. Which of these options you choose just depends on what is most convenient for you to work with and easiest to keep track of visually. It also depends on things like whether you might want to bounce the chain separately, send more than one sound of the effect, or where you want to continue processing the sum of the two audio signals later on. It's always good to be aware of multiple solutions to the same problem, because at different times you might find a different solution more convenient. Another example of multiple solutions to the same problem would be layering instruments that play the same MIDI part. You can do this both in an instrument layer, placing the instruments at different layers here, or placing one instrument on the original track, and then creating a second instrument track, that receives the track's MIDI output and placing the second instrument on the second track. These will both now follow this MIDI clip. You can also add instruments later down your FX chain after some processing to layer them in. Just make sure to place them in an FX or instrument layer with a chain that lets the audio through from before them or you will only hear the last instrument. This chain now lets the audio from before through, and this chain introduces a secondary instrument that also follows the MIDI signal. One last thing you should know about is the studio out. This determines the sound you actually hear through your speakers. By default, the master's output is set to studio, but you might not always want that, for example, if you want to create a listen bus. I go into this more in my video on templates. For now this is enough. See you in the next one.